Now, you've no doubt saved a lot for retirement, and you possibly have a sizable 401k or IRA as a result. Congratulations, you know, uh, but there uh, are things that might backfire as you approach the age where you must take a RMD or required minimum distribution. It's uh, either 72, 73, or 75 down the road, depending on when you were born. Having that fat balance means those RMDs, they could actually push you into a higher tax bracket. So with that in mind, what can we do to keep more of our money and legally give less to the government when it comes to taxes? I would say that it's a very important topic for most people as they approach retirement to decide how much and when they want to take money out of their IRAs. A lot of times people think about, well, at retirement time, I'm going to turn on Social Security, I'm going to sign up for Medicare, and then I'm going to use my retirement funds for any ancillary types of needs that I have at retirement. I would subscribe that perhaps it might make some sense that if you are looking at your retirement savings and you're saying, I'm not going to need this money for several years. I'm, my, the funds that I have of Social Security and, and what I've saved up in the bank, that's going to help. I'm going to be able to meet my needs without touching the IRA in the retirement savings. Well, I think you should really have a, a second thought about that because if you will turn on and take some income early on in retirement, then perhaps doing something like a Roth IRA conversion would make a lot of sense because if you take a withdrawal from your IRA, and it doesn't matter how much it is, you're going to be taxed on it. But by converting that to a Roth account, when you start drawing money from that, you will never be income taxed on it at all from a federal standpoint in the years into the future. And I would say that you're probably going to be absorbing that tax hit while you're still working or newly retired. You manage the withdrawal so it doesn't adversely affect your tax bracket. It's a very worthwhile discussion to have with us here at America's Retirement Headquarters because I think more and more people should be thinking about doing this type of thing because Roth IRAs coming back to that topic do not have required minimum distributions. So therefore, you can delay taking withdrawals from those types of accounts to a time when it's not going to affect you from a federal tax perspective at all and you're actually going to be living in a lower tax environment the more money you have in a Roth program. So I, I think, you know, people who say, I don't need my IRA money, they ought to really have a, a meaningful discussion with us here about how we can help them lower their overall tax exposure into the future and coming back to what Nolan talked about, that's a big part of the retirement team action plan because taxes is, is one of the main cogs of that, of coming up with that plan. You know, a big part of that team approach is, you know, the fact that we're not accountants. So, you know, we also want to make sure that you're checking before you make any financial moves with your accountant, run the numbers, uh, make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page. You know, when I'm looking at ways to reduce required minimum distributions, being that, uh, you know, we are retirement specialists working with people that are getting close to or in retirement time, what I would say is if we look at when pensions went away and it shifted to the transition of the 401ks, I think a, a lot of society was taught to save and invest as much as you possibly can in a tax deferred retirement account because the concept would be your tax rates would be lower in retirement time. You know, now working with hundreds of families of doing this, what I would say is that that generally is not oftentimes what I see. Those people who are successful in saving for the future are actually out there enjoying retirement time. They're, you know, maybe got a secondary house at a lake or somewhere south. They're spending time uh, taking trips and vacations. They're doing the things that they, you know, wanted to do in retirement time, and their income is oftentimes uh, not lower in retirement. When we uh, think about, you know, folks that are younger, younger workers, maybe before the age 50, 
What we've seen in, in the last several years is, as you mentioned, the, the Roth IRAs can be a great strategy to consider as part of an, over, an overall plan. But many of the 401ks now have a Roth 401k option as well. And you should look at how you're saving money. What happens is a lot of people that are retirees come into the office and they have the lion's share of their money in a tax-deferred uh, 401k or an IRA. And, and what that means is that because all or most of all of their money is in that account, whatever the government decides is their fair tax rate in the future, that's the tax bill that they're going to owe. But for these younger workers, if they diversified not only their investment approach, but if they diversified their savings and they put more money into the Roth 401k or the Roth IRA, uh, that would give them the ability to kind of hedge a little bit about what the future of taxation is going to be in this country. And, you know, my opinion, although the government doesn't care what my opinion is, my opinion <laughs> is tax rates are going to be probably dramatically higher because of the amount of money that our government has spent and continues to spend. You know, so higher tax rates could be a, a bit of reality for a lot of people. So trying to you know, take advantage and keep the government away from your money is, is important. The other thing that I'd, I'd say is when people put money in a tax-deferred traditional IRA, 457 or, uh, you know, 401k plan, what that means is that they're saving a little bit of money on taxes today. And that's like saving money on the seed. But if you're successful over, you know, years and decades of investing, the reason that you're saving for the future is you want that initial deposit to be substantially higher in the future than what it's worth today. So what, in, in essence, you're doing is you're saving a little bit of money on taxes on a small contribution to pay what could be much larger taxes in the future on what the larger balance is. And then as Dave points out, if you're blessed enough that you have a little bit of money left over and you don't need it, and you're going to pass it to your children or that next generation, uh, that's where the ticking tax time bomb can go off. Uh, in fact, if the children cash in the retirement accounts when mom and dad pass away, uh, all that money can be taxable. We've seen with the changes of the SECURE Act, uh, them shortening the ability to stretch out the taxation of how those accounts work. Those people that are already at retirement time, maybe you're, you're close to that required minimum distribution age, maybe you're already in RMD age. If you're uh, philanthropic-minded, maybe you donate to your church or a charity, you really want to make sure that you're uh, taking advantage and aware of if you have the ability to donate directly from your IRA to your charitable organization. Um, by doing that, what can happen is the charity can you know, get 100% of the money, plus it satisfies your required minimum distribution if you follow the rules. And in addition, it can keep that RMD uh, off of your taxes, uh, meaning keep you in a lower potential tax bracket. So if you, you are donating to charities, if you're over the age 70 and you're a required minimum distribution age and you're not familiar with how that works, we'd love to talk to you. Then every year, I think um, folks should have what is called a tax roadmap run. When we're looking at a tax roadmap, I'm, I'm generally looking at what is called strategic Roth conversions and tactical Roth conversions. A strategic Roth conversion is looking at, you know, how much you have left in your same tax bracket to be able to convert over. Uh, from a tactical perspective, it's good to do Roth conversions when investments are low. And with the market at an all-time high, you got to be careful. So the way that we can help out is get you a 2024 tax roadmap. And uh, we'd be happy to run that analysis and help try to minimize the taxes that you pay. I want to remind you that the R in RMD stands for required. Even if you don't need the money, you don't have any need for the money. The government, they, they do. And so they are requiring you to take it out pay those taxes on there. There are ways to minimize that, whether that is through these charitable uh, the donations, these charitable contributions, a Roth conversion, things like that, to figure out how it is going to work best for you and make sure you get to either keep as much as possible or pay as little as possible, certainly when it comes to uh, the government and taxation. That's where that tax roadmap comes into play, not just for this year, but the years to come. That begins reaching out, 419-794-3030. Or you can go to the website, so that is arhq.com. 